Welcome back to the 501st Hangout. Today we're going to be talking about Andor. So the first three episodes were released in uh, mid September, and we've been and we've gotten five episodes in total. And I'm just going to be talking about the good, the bad, the ugly of the show, and my thoughts on it as a whole, and why it is one of the best things to come from Disney Star Wars. Be talking about the bad stuff first, and what most people are saying is that it's slow. I mean, yeah, it's a, gonna be a twelve episode season of a TV show, each episode being like forty minutes long. It's gonna be slow in the beginning. That's why, like, the show has that freedom. It can be slow because there's gonna be more. To it, whereas a movie, it kind of has to start off fast to establish characters, plot, and all that stuff. Because somebody was comparing the first 15 minutes of the first episode of Andor to the first 15 minutes of Rogue One. Saying that so much happened in the first 15 minutes of Rogue One compared to the first 15 minutes of Andor. The first 15 minutes of Rogue One had so much in it because it's a movie. It has to establish so many things early on. Whereas a show can do that spread out because there's going to be more after that. And it's going to have more runtime, so it can do more and more stuff. So, yes, it's going to be slow. Now that we got the bad stuff out of the way, let's talk to about the good stuff. And let's start that with the show itself. It's not only about Andor, which is a character that had little backstory to begin with. It's also about the beginning of the Rebel Alliance. And I say the Rebel Alliance because I want to say the beginning of the Rebellion is way early on because we saw in Bad Batch that Saw Gerrera had already started to form some resistance. And that was like really early on, really early on. So it's not the beginning of the idea of rebelling, but it's Showing the beginning of the Alliance, which we see the formation of the Alliance in Star Wars Rebel TV show, but we're going to get more of the making of that in this. The show is also obviously like made for an older audience of Star Wars fans. We're tackling some mature themes here with politics and the right and wrong and... I mean, there's a kid writing a manifesto in a Star Wars show. <laughs> like, what? It's obviously, for the older, it's also more violent in terms of Andor chokes this guy out with a slap or a punch to the throat. He dies, and then he just basically executes the guy. So, there's that. And then, like I said... The political side of things, we're getting Mon Mothma and all that. We're getting to see Mon Mothma's family, which is a very interesting concept. It's kind of unnecessary, but I suppose it does show that even though they're in the same family, they have very different beliefs. And then Luthen is just, he's honestly one of my favorite characters in this show. He's so two-sided. He's, it's... Amazing how he can go from one personality to the next by just putting on a new set of robes and then a wig and some rings. So, yeah. And then there's also more swearing in the show. Uh, they, yeah, they have more swearing... <laughs> They ha they say the S word uh, for the first time ever in Star Wars. I say that in quotes because I don't want to say the actual word, you know. I want to keep this a kid-friendly uh, channel. So I'm not going to say what they say, but y you know what I'm talking about. We're also getting a very personal Star Wars, if that makes sense. For example, in episode 4 and 5, we get a very in-depth look of what members of the Rebellion are fighting for and fighting against. There's the kid who's writing a manifesto. He's He believes the Empire is morally wrong, but then there's the older guy who's just... His brother's farm got 
absolutely just massacred by the Empire. And then the lieutenant, he fell in love, and the person he fell in love with, uh, he, taken away from him. <laughs> Very personal stuff, and Andor's just there for the money. So... <laughs> We're also getting some very in-depth Easter eggs. Some obvious ones are is the Star Killer armor in Luthen's shop. We also see uh, Plo Koon's breathing mask or air mask, and holocrons, huge holocrons replicas maybe. And in his shop, you can also see a stone slab with the hand formations of the the father, the son, and the daughter. So that's pretty interesting. And there's also some Indiana Jones references in there. I haven't seen all the Indiana Jones films, but there's crystals from one of the films. I, I don't remember which, but Indiana Jones references. That's cool for an Indiana Jones fans and Star Wars fans alike. So, I mean, moving away from a story and plot side of things... Uh, I want to talk about the production, and this show has great production. Um, they were Scott. They were sorry. They were shot in the like hills of Scotland or wherever Europe, beautiful place. I wouldn't know. I haven't been there, but the show makes it look so amazing. And they're going to locations instead of using the volume for. Uh, if you don't know what the volume is, it's what they sh use on shows like Obi-Wan, The Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett. It's just this giant ring of screens that show um, show terrain instead of having the actors actually walk on terrain, which could be useful, but, I mean, it's on location. It, it just looks so amazing. The costumes are also uh, great. I think the contrast between the common people and... The empires and it's amazing. I mean, the ISB's white suits just look so so great, so crisp compared to Andor's like trench coat or you know just normal attire. I mean, it's just so great. And yeah, production value. It this show had a higher production value than. Or it seems like it had a higher production value than anything. And it kind of does make some of the other shows look bad. Specifically Obi-Wan. I mean, I, I liked Obi-Wan, but this show just blows Obi-Wan away. Like, it... Off in hyperspace. It, it's not even fair at this point. It's... Oh, it's so good. So, there's a problem. And the problem is that not enough people are watching this show. According to... Some articles and such. More people are watching She-Hulk. The show that is getting absolutely trashed on by everyone has more has a higher viewership count than Andor. A high production, amazing show. I mean, most people are just watching She-Hulk for Daredevil now. And now that Daredevil, spoilers, has been in there. And it doesn't seem like he's coming back in the final episode of She-Hulk. I feel like some people won't really watch it anymore, but they're still going to, and there's no point to when you could just instead watch Andor. You'll enjoy it more than She-Hulk if you're a Star Wars fan and you just haven't been watching it. You should watch Andor. It is so good. So yeah, I just want to make a quick video on Andor, you know, and it has hot takes been probably the best Disney Plus show so far. Mandalorian, I mean, that was... Mandalorian's a great show. I just think it's a little overrated. This Andor show is underrated by far, and it has a high production value. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should rephrase from saying it's the best, but it's definitely one of the best, if, if not the best. I mean, come on now. That's about it. Later, nerds.